Hello again, I'm Milton and welcome to the Little Milto channel. So why did I buy the Gen 3 from Milwaukee? Quite a lot of reasons actually, but one of the biggest reasons was I got it pretty cheap. I actually got it for less than £120. So I thought, okay then, I'll go for this. Now, before some people start thinking, oh yeah, I bet you got this off Milwaukee as a freebie or something. Nope. I'll bring you in now and I'll show you the actual receipt for it. Okay, here's the receipt. Del del delivery address, of course, has been scored out. Order date, I ordered this on Saturday, May the 4th, 2019. And look when it came. It actually came on the 18th, but I just thought I'll just leave it at the 19th. Today is actually the 20th, today, May the 20th. So, Delivery service standard, buyer name Andrew Bell, seller name this person here. Now, Ace Work Gear Limited. I'm going to show you the condition it came in. Now, if you look down here, we've got the Milwaukee M18FID2. Don't know what the OX is. And again, here it's repeated again impact driver. There's the price what I paid for it. Subtotal, total price. I am total. Everything. Grand total. That's it there. You see? And if you see here, it says condition new. Okay then. So I can safely say that I paid for this with my own money through my son's Amazon Prime account. Not wrong button again. Now, I'm hoping you can see the damage. Remember? New condition. Remember the seller? That I had to buy it off. See there? Black mark there, it's dented there, and it's also dented in there. That is how it actually came. It wasn't damaged in transit because it was too well wrapped up. I checked that, and there was no damage on the actual wrapping. That is what the maker sent me, that there. So, not too happy. So you got to say, why not send it back? Well, considering I ordered it on May the 4th, and it is now May the 20th, and it did arrive on May the 18th, that means if I send it back, it'll take ages for it to actually come back to us. And not only that, they'll give us a refund. And guess what? It's went up in price now. Now it's £130. So, in other words, if I send it back, all I'm going to get is a refund for my money. But to buy another one, it's going to cost me more money. So I'll just live with the one I've got with the damage on it. And trust me on this, it'll probably end up getting worse treatment with us anyway, because we can be quite rough at times. I know the, the equipment looks in good condition. That's because we do clean them, so it makes them look clean. But trust me, they've got some scratches on them. So I'm going to live with it. Now, let's have some specifications on this. They're quite impressive, actually, I must admit. Now, to start with, first speed, 1,900 RPM, impacts per minute, 1,200, seems a bit low, but newtons of torque, 119 newtons. That's actually got more power than our very first impact that we had, by a small amount, but it's still more. Second speed, 2,800, delivering 3,400 impacts per minute, newtons of torque, 176 newtons. That means, that impact up there, I don't know if it's on the camera, spins the same speed, but that only delivers 160 newtons, and this is delivering 176. Hmm. Third speed, 3,600 RPM, delivering 4,300 impacts per minute, Newtons of torque, 226. So that is actually quite impressive. Then you've got tap mode, which tap mode it actually only spends at 2,600 RPM. You see? So it's, they have reduced it. I didn't know that. I thought it'd be the same speed as said, but it's not. It's actually slower. And what I actually got with this was, of course, the impact. I got the little thing here for uh, putting things empty, whatever you would call it, a clip for putting uh, accessories in, but we don't use them, we find they're a bit junky for Milwaukee, they should really use a magnet, and of course we've got a belt hook as well. 
Now, I'm going to read out what first speed. This is what Milwaukee put down for first speed, what it's actually for. For precision work. Fair enough. Speed 2. Helps prevent damage to fasteners and material. Fair. Speed 3. Delivers maximum performance for the toughest application. Okay. Tap mode. Automatically adjusts speed, impact and torque. So, there we have it. Quite plain and quite simple forward. In other words, what they're saying is, if you're using small fasteners, don't try and do it in high speed. It's things like this. Fair enough. Okay, let's have a quick round of the machine. To start off with, it has usual one-piece type chuck. You push it in and it goes straight in. To get it out, you lift, pull this back and out it pops. Which is good. I wish all manufacturers would do this. Okay, we've done that. Something I also noticed, because of the sheer power of this impact, they've increased the size of this piece of metal around here. I actually measured them up. It was originally 3.44 millimetres. It's now 3.99. In other words, you could say they've maybe moved it up by half a mil and made it actually thicker. But I'm not surprised with the sheer amount of power that's coming out of this. Okay, we've got a rubber bit here, which is very good. Of course, this bit here, the housing, is actually metal, which will get hot if you're using the machine quite ex extensively. We also have a piece of rubber there at the side. And as we move along, you see the Milwaukee logo. And then, of course, this bit here at the back is quite is separate. You can, you can actually undo that separately if you want, if you have to clean it or get bits of junk out if it gets out of the fan. Although I have mentioned this before about the gaps on these here being quite open. But yeah, again, nobody's ever had a problem. we getting stuff stuck in there, so fine. I'll just be quiet about it. And as I say, it's got the rubber around here. But one feature that I do like is, finally, Milwaukee stopped putting Texas instrument stickers on them that looked like the old speaking spell. They finally put a decent sticker on, like that's the old one there. Or maybe this is just came being an import in for America and that's the American sticker. I don't know. But anyway, that's good news because I never did like them. I always thought it made them look cheap and tacky. Now, moving around, we've got the rubber on the handle here. And of course, we've also forgotten about the left and right, sorry, forward and reverse. I keep calling it left and right, it's forward and reverse. Which, yeah, again, very good. Basically the same as what the Milwaukee Sarge has. And of course, it sits flush. Very, very nice. Nice and clicky. It'll wear, but still good. And of course, you still have the nice trigger. One thing I did notice. Let's try this again. Maybe it's me, but I feel as if it's slightly smaller on the grip. It feels smaller. That feels like it's got a bigger handle on it. Mm, it is, it's not by much. Anyway, the light stays on for 10 seconds after you let go of the trigger. And of course, as you come down, you've got your rubber, you've got your switch gear in here for your speeds. And of course, we mentioned the bell clip which is left and right and I took this stupid thing off because I don't like them they just seem yeah and of course this is sitting on a 2 amp battery which the batteries are very easy to get out you just pull the tabs in and pull it out which yeah they work independently as well they didn't know that and then clips it back into place again the mod selector works very easy you just press down on this bit here and you can see now we're in first there's second there's third Back into tap mode, and you press it again, it goes straight over and back into first. And if you look down here at the front, you see the battery indicator, which lights up and shows that the battery is actually filled. Now, let's have some fun. I need a new piece of wood. This is actually screwed together, so we've got to remove the screws out of it. So how much noise is it going to make when I actually remove the screws? Let's find out. Hmm, that's a lot of noise. Let's try this one. Hmm, no. Let's, that's on speed three. Let's put it on speed 
one. Let's see if it makes any difference. Nope. Speed two. Hmm. Okay. Let's try the Milwaukee Surge. We normally use this on speed two, it's on speed three. On speed three or two? Two, we'll just go for two, okay. <laughs> Gen three is now officially quieter than the Milwaukee Surge. <laughs> It's okay, bigger fasteners, it will activate. Right, we've done this, I'll get the other piece of wood ready. Okay, I had to redo this again, because when this screw went into there, it split the wood right on the end. I thought, well, that don't look very good. So, what's gonna happen when we push this screw in? How much noise are we gonna get? That is a 5 by, sorry, a 4 by 50, which is 8 gauge by 2 inch. And as you've clearly seen, no noise. Now, I'm going to put another one in, up on here. Then we'll try it with the Milwaukee Surge. And this is in speed 2. Let's turn a bit further. It's actually very, very, very controllable, I must admit. For a machine with the amount of power that it's actually got, it is actually controllable. Now, my lucky surge, we're going in here, okay? No, we're not, we're going to redo that one again. I don't know why it did that. Green. Noise. But yeah, it's not overly noisy, very, very quiet. So really and truly, what is a surprise with this is, for 50 mil screws or two inch screws putting them into place, it's not actually acting on the impacts, which means brilliant. I mean, that means we can actually get away with this at times, providing the fasteners that don't get too big, we can use it inside. So you see, I must admit, now you had to activate there. That's on speed on speed two. Well, I'm just turning it up at speed three. Okay, we're on speed three now. No problem. Although it does want to actually push them in a bit further, I must admit. It definitely has got some power there. But what happens if we move it up in diameter to five mil or ten gauge? Let's have a look at that. Okay, these are 50 mil, these screws, and as I said, they'll be 5 mil or 10 gauge. Let's see if we get a bit more noise. I'll just come in about here, I'll stagger them. See, it does, it starts to activate. The thinner screws, it just pushes straight in. I thought that would happen, and that's exactly what's happened. Then again, I did know because I have been actually mucking around with it or playing with it, if you know what I mean. So we'll try a different screw in for a different company. Let's see if it does it with any of these ones. Same size again, just a different company. See, it does actually activate. But just to be fair, we'll jump over and we'll use the Milwaukee Surge and see what it does. Again here, it's just drumming all the way down, because these are impulse. They're under uh, load all the time. The impulse, it works, the way it works on oh, them. Now I think we should go away now and try some bigger tests now, wait, to see just how it performs. So, it's it for the seller time now. Now this next test, pretty self-explanatory. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting one here and one over here like so. It's so that the impacts themselves don't clash with each other 
and they've got separation. But it's got to also make it look like one of these is longer than the other. I noticed that before when I was doing it. They're not. They'll both be the same length in there. And of course, it's obviously got to be an impact on each end getting driven in. So I'll start getting it set up now. Also what I'm going to do, because of the noise, I'm actually going to take the microphone stand, pull it further back, and I'm going to turn the microphone round the other way so we get less noise. This is the wood I'm using, previous attempts with other tests, and believe you me, this is hardwood. It is quite a test. Now, this model here, which is the old Hitachi triple action, I'm not going to put it in for this test because this actually beat this. And this is the, oh, it's on this side, isn't it? The professional GDX 18 volt 200C. Of course, you all know it as the Freak or the Hybrid. And as I say, I'm not putting this one in for this test. It just means it'll drag on because this actually beat this. So this will go in for a speed test though. Now I'll go away and I'll get some ear defenders because the DeWalt is up next. The Bosch spins at 3400, has 200 newtons and has 4000 4, impacts per minute. Oh, we got this right. The writing on this is absolutely atrocious. It's so small. Uh, impacts 3800. Revolutions, 3,250 that looks like to me. I could be wrong, but not that much bothered. Now, next problem, I forgot. The wall, oh, the, the model is DCF887. Hope it doesn't catch fire. Anyway, the outlet won't go on on the 3 amp battery. Well, I'll just sort that out now. Go on now. Yep, fits like a glove. Okay, I'll get them ready. Okay then, let's have a go with the AEG oil pulse drive. This one, model number is BSS 1AOP. I have no idea what it's got, can't even see them. It's actually only got 72, I think, newton meters of torque, but it is definitely the fastest and the most powerful list out of the hydraulic drives up against the Gen 3. So let's give it a shot then, okay. Now I know this is on a 6 amp battery and this 6 amp battery is supposed to deliver more power. But I still reckon this will take it out even on a 3 amp battery because that's all I've been using by the Bosch. It actually got a 4 amp battery because they never 3. So, oh, that'll have to be turned around again. Attempt number 2. I'm 
Now the reason why I went for this machine, and this is supposed to either have 205 or 210, it's triple action. It's got a new name here in Britain, and America it's Metabo HPT, I believe, something like that. I just thought, the Bosch beat this the last time out, and yet, look at the distance. Kind of weird. That's why I redid that. I thought, I'm going to have a have go at this. Because I can't believe in how much the Bosch actually lost by. Anyway, don't matter. Now you've seen it here. It came, it saw, it conquered. The winner. Trust me when I say this, that last test I was just doing with them long screws which are 7 inches long by 12 gauge or they are 6 mil by 180 mil. They were a pain in the backside to try and get in. Trust me on that. Okay, next up. 32 mil test, just quick, sweet, with this lovely bit that I re-edged from DeWalt. Okay, we'll just go in here and we'll see what we get. I'll miss everything. Oh, I'll put my ear defenders on as well. That's why you should wear safety glasses when you're doing things like this. I did not expect that. I'll go and get my glasses. Okay, got the glasses on. One more shot. Yep, definitely powerful. We'll set up for the... Uh, 32 mil Bosch self feed or daredevil, whatever you want to call them. But here, I think, should miss everything. Another one for good measure. No problem. Unbelievably powerful. Now, I was going to do a speed test, but I decided not to bother with four inch screws. It's just going to take too long, and I think the outcome would have been quite plain and quite simple. At the end of this, the Gen 3 from Milwaukee, it would have still won at the end of the day, because it is that powerful and it is fast. I mean, you've seen it here. The two impacts that really surprised me was actually the DeWalt did not too bad, he got down quite far actually. And the other one, the rigid of the AEG across here, this one, the hydraulic. It, oh, hit that switch again. It actually did rather well. I didn't think it would do as good as it did, but it did. And of course, the Bosch, what do you expect? Professional drills. Eh, sorry, impacts. My mistake. And of course, the Milwaukee Surge. It is also a professional tool. This is what Milwaukee actually originally said about the Surge, that it is actually for professionals. And I must admit, believe it or not, the majority of plumbers that I've come across, this is what they're using, and along with the electricians as well, they're using them as well because they're quieter and they're using them indoors in people's houses and blah, 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 so on and so on. So they're using them. But this, of course, the noise on it, it is a damned good impact, I must admit. Am I going to use it? Yes, I am going to use it because I'm finished now with, with, now, with this one here, which is the Makita DTP, yeah, DTP, I did get it right, 141. It's their version of the hybrid. And I'm going to be doing a video on that, uh, about it. is it any actual good? Of course, I can now get my son back his uh, DeWalt, well, straighten up the belt clip on it as well, while I'm at it. 
Yeah, that looks straight enough. That'll do. I'm going to check to see if it fits on. No, it doesn't fit on. I've straightened it correctly. And it didn't catch fire as well. And the bits that we actually used were V5 bits. They were actually TE30s, V5s. And I must admit, they're a bit of wear on them, but nothing drastic. And the heat-wise on the Milwaukee, I forgot what I was going to call it there. <coughs> It actually only got slightly warm, so I mean, that's good as well. I mean, it was doing some pretty hard work. Them 7-inch or 180mm screws, they do take quite a bit of driving in, but they did it. And how much power did it use? I just swapped the batteries over just now. It actually dropped one, you see, because that battery lives on this. I'm waiting till Milwaukee brings out the 3-amp batteries here in Britain, and that's what I'll give them. So this will end up going with us in the emergency toolbox in case we need the grunt. We originally were going to use um, the green thing up there, the, well, we'll just call it the Hitachi. It's not Hitachi anymore. It's actually, this is its name now. <laughs> that name there, which I can't even pronounce the damn thing. They should have just gave us the same name as the Americans. However, they didn't. So yeah, it's a worthwhile buy, and especially if you can get it cheap enough, and if you've got the battery platform, it's well worth it, and it's pretty controllable as well, which I was surprised at. Yeah, for the smaller screws, maybe say 3 inch or 70mm, things like this, you might be better off turning it down at speed 2, but most people will just leave it on speed 3 and just go for it and just learn to get used to the speed, and it is totally possible. What are we got to do with it? It's got to be a good old backup impact, to be honest with you. I mean, to be honest, I think these two complement each other. And once we get them sorted out with three amp batteries, we're on win, win, win. Because we do like the Milwaukee Surge. It's a brilliant impact. And it gives the controllability. Plus, it is quieter at the end of the day. And of course, this thing for just sheer power and it's lightweight. And for small jobs, small thin screws, the impact on it won't actually go off anyway so again it's a win-win again so anyway what's my next video going to be about well we'll have a quick look then won't we hmm according to this what is this oh, have a quick look at this <laughs> no, I wonder what's in here, eh? Well, let's then have a quick look. It's just got batteries in it, but I don't think it has. Okay. Hmm. Right, a cordless multi car. That's what I'm going to be doing next. And why? You'll find out on the next video then. Okay. Bye now.